I have survived 1,352 days in hardcore Minecraft. I built entire towns, drained ocean monuments, assembled massive structures of obsidian, and built a world tree. I've done a lot of really cool stuff, but the Minecrafty side of my base is, well, uh, lacking. Today, I am building the first storage room inside of this hardcore world. A log mill to store all of the wood-related items and making space for the new mangrove wood coming soon. Hey folks, Flip here, and welcome to Hardcore Minecraft. As with every episode in this world, it's time to plant a new field. Last episode, we added the new potato field down by the lake, where you have nothing. Just leads and new llama friends. Today, we've got a big terraforming project bringing a mountain stream from all the way down there connecting into the lake so i think we use the empty space over here to build the field and i've got a fun idea we need lily of the valley flowers so crafting up a ton of pistons snow blocks observers dispensers and other redstone goodies we're off to find a flower for us which i believe we have one out here along the edge of the ocean Step one, we need to find where the lily of the valleys are spawning. The best way is to take some bone meal, clear out the natural flower spawns, and start spamming the bone meal until we get them. I found every type of tulip, cornflowers, oxide ACs, poppies, dandelions, you name it, but no lilies. Even filling in the lava pool, covering it up with grass to get even more chances. I feel like they're right in here, but it's bugged. Look at this. I'm using the bone meal, but no flowers or anything are being created here in the middle. This is where the lava pit was, but I filled it in. I just wanted to make a pretty field. The only thing seeing me through on this and not just planting a wheat field is my own stubbornness. And dang it, we're going to find Lily of the Valleys. That's not how we find them. That is absolutely not how we find them. The one time I want to use Lily of the Valley, they don't exist. They're right there. We found them. They're right here. I wasted so much time. They're just... Nope. Please, 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 please respawn. Please don't do this to me, game. Don't do this to me. You've got to be kidding me. No, it's white tulips. I went back home to do a quick think here, but look at this. We've got another one right next to us. And maybe, maybe this flower forest will have some. Oh, I see some lilies. I have 38 pieces of bone meal left. Even if we find a spawn, there's no way I can get enough for a farm. Lilies do spawn in forest, birch forest, and dark hog forest. So I started exploring to pick as many as I could find. I see them. I see the beautiful flowers. Look at them. Oh, I see more. Oh, they exist. This will bring us up to 37, 30, 37. Locked on and we're swooping in for the flowers. Oh, there we go. Over three stacks. That took so long, but it's finally time. Finally time to plant the field. Have you checked if you're subscribed? I recently passed 1 million subscribers, but still less than 50% of you watching this video are actually subscribed. So please double check for me as it helps me out a ton. This might just be my new prize possession inside the hardcore world. Mega tree who? Lily of the Valley flower field. I mean, look at this thing. It's gorgeous. Planting a field supposed to be like our free 20 minute thing and we spent hours. I mean, that deserves a like, right? Right? We do now have a flower farm in a box though, which is pretty cool. Before we can do anything here, however, my Elytra is literally falling apart. So I've got to repair it before I go splat much better to create an effective storage room for wood we need a few redstone things an item sorter because i shouldn't do it myself a shulker box unloader for space to create a new shulker monster finally a transportation system to move things from point a to point b to accomplish this i need a ton of redstone related goodies from stacks of hoppers chests observers droppers comparators repeaters complicators multipliers redstone dustifiers redstone torches and you name it we got it for the sorting system so it's easily accessible from the base i want to put it up here on the side of the hill so we have a bunch of space to work with we're going to bury it down here a touch and as a way to know which log is going to be in which chest we can throw them all here down on the ground with mangrove wood definitely being that and perfect now we just need to build a sorting system around this entire thing Assembling the redstone sorting system, I went for aesthetics instead of efficiency so I can build this thing into an awesome structure. Raising the sorters into the upper level and handling all of the redstone wiring up here, I think it's going to be a lot better for the building side. Next, I went through the process of setting up all of the filters, adding in the log type and the filter blocks to stop anything else from going through. 
To solve the problem of getting items all the way up there so they can actually be sorted, we need to come through here and create a dropper elevator. With a redstone clock at the base, doing a little something like this. Next, because a smart person told me to do this, I need to add composters on top of every hopper. Then if we throw these dark oak logs into the bottom dropper, eventually they should end up in here. And yes, the system works. We're missing one. Moving on to the final element, the shulker box unloader. I don't even know how this works. This design is by Samos the Sage and it just does magic and unloads things. It's great. I don't, I don't know what to say. If I hook the lineup correctly, we should see it in there. Yes, items are getting pulled out and they are going up the dispenser. So those should all end up in the varying chests in a little while and eventually it'll hopefully be in this barrel. Otherwise, I did it all wrong. Please be right. Well, the shulker is sorting. I wanted to clear away a good chunk of the mountain so we can build the log mill and come back later to terraform and fix it up. With the sorting system ready to go, we've got to build a structure around this to house it. So I want to create the lumber mill. I'm trying to learn how to upscale my building, so this should do great. Next up, we need resources to build the thing. Hold up, I was clearing shulker boxes. I have six regular diamond ore. That's the rarest block in the game. We cannot break these, they are sacred, but this stupid deep slate diamond, boring. Back to gathering resources where I need a ton of spruce logs. And this should do it for the spruce. Next, we're flying on over to the dark oak forest. Dark oak wood acquired and a load of birch too. Don't worry, eventually I'm gonna build my own custom birch forest. On top of this, I also need a bunch of mushroom blocks. This should be enough. Loaded everything into the storage room for now. And that should be all of the wood we need. Next, we need a ton of stones. Thankfully, I've already got granite, terracotta, tough blocks, andesite. Next up, I need a load of bricks and dripstone blocks. Grabbing a few emeralds from inside of here. Oh, we've got plenty. And down to the stone masons, where we can trade for the dripstone blocks and a load of bricks. All out of emeralds, but that should do it. One more item I need is actually gonna be a bunch of oak logs, but thankfully we still have excess over here. Which I decided to bring all of the oak logs over, so hopefully we never run out. Step one, we're gonna tackle the foundation of the structure. Grabbing the andesite and a ton of tough. I think it'll be good to bring in the foundation that we've used throughout the rest of this area, but having it on different layers for the different structures that we're incorporating. So it's not just a harsh flat line. The base of the structure is now in, and I wanna spend some time focusing on the front upper layer to get the full idea of what this will look like from the valley. Starting on the front of the build, I wanna add in an archway throughout here. So we have a big entrance to be able to fly right inside the storage room. And then we do some strip logs here on top. Then using a Tudor-ish design like we've done so far in the the rest of the houses, we can extend this out a block and start pillaring up the logs. With the next layer done, I want to start incorporating a little bit more detail as we move up. For the cross beams, we can throw in some dark oak trap doors, and now we incorporate the mushroom block and in revealing the cool inner texture right like this. Well, moving forward to complete the entire front face of our new lumber mill. With our front created, I wanna copy that same idea around over here to this side and bringing some spruce along the back here so we can have a divider between this and our brick down below. Eventually, we'll bring all the roof lines together, but for now, let's just get the front faces in. And back up on the other side. Yeah, that's looking fantastic. Just time to bring it around every other side. One small problem has come up. I've been trying to lay out the rest of the foundation and well, the shulker box unloader is sticking out a little too far. So I think what we can do here instead is build up its own structure around it, just using some of the dripstone blocks. And if I can get lucky, we can just throw in some dark oak slabs and it's hidden. Now over here, I think it's gonna be quite boring if we do the exact same thing. So instead we're gonna pillar up a load of spruce over here, which hopefully doesn't break anything. Then we have another large entry door inside of here. Now bringing in some more of our spruce stairs and slabs and have the slabs step up into the middle. Inside of the gap, I thought it'd be fun to just bring in a little bit of the brown mushroom block and leave it as is. 
From here, things get a little interesting as it's going to be inching all the way up to the top. Oh, I made it to the top right there. So we've only got a little divider. Then we stretch the slabs all the way down. On the inside, for some detail, we can throw this in along every single one of our arches that we've created. And now it's not flat anymore. From here, I finished adding the wood walls to have the second story and outlined the roof and decorated the sides a touch further. To make it feel like this area is very functional and things are happening, I want to add in some chimneys to give ourselves some life using the soul fire campfires so that they don't glow as much. And that'll be perfect. Now I planned out the roof a bit and it's going to be awesome. I want to use an earthy gradient going from brown terracotta to rooted dirt, which means we need a lot of cocoa beans. I'll find a better home for this later, but we can at least get a small farm going so we don't completely run out of these. And now we wait for them to grow. Yeah. While that's going on, I need some brown wool. We've got plenty of dirt, rooted dirt, a quick trip to the guardian farm because I need to bring some of the sand home, which is all stored right back here. Oh, how did you get up here? No, thank you. That is not good. But with this, we can craft a bunch of brown concrete powder, bone mealing some cocoa beans, and we can hurry this process up. We need a load of brown terracotta too, and to turn a stack of the powder into brown concrete. And here we have the final gradient, brown terracotta, to rooted dirt. We gotta just put it on the roof. I forgot brown concrete powder will fall down, so we've gotta put an inner layer on the roof. Well, adding in the stripped dark oak logs, I decided it would look nice to break up the symmetry on the roof by adding in some small windows. Two on the side looking down the mountain and one on the side looking back towards the starter base. Even with just the stripped dark oak logs in here, it doesn't look half bad, but it's time to add in the gradient which gives us something a little like this. Time to do this across the entire building. I'm in love with this roof, but I want to introduce a little bit of color and a way to keep it a bit more mob safe. So adding some of our nether sprouts up here, as well as some glow lichen, I think we can achieve it. Not going too overboard, just as if a little something's growing on the roof. The structure is now complete, but it doesn't really look like a lumber mill yet. I want to add in a water wheel, bringing in some terraforming. I believe this will be the best if we start from the top where the water comes in. End goal, saw blade right here. Have this come out. We can attach it to a belt and bringing the mountain back even further we can build a giant water wheel somewhere back in here for that we do need some water so i planned out the path for the river to connect down to the lake and continued with cutting back the mountainside to give myself more space to work with with a good amount of this area cleaned up we can actually start to create the riverbed out of coarse dirt chickens you're gonna stay down here now before we send any further i gotta get the riverbed down there and of course it's all turning to ice a quick fix is just putting some seagrass in The river is definitely coming up a little bit higher than I intended, so we're going to need to install a barrier along it, but I'm thinking here in the center, so I'd like to bring in some more cobble deep slate along here. And don't worry, soon the front of the build will not be floating. But till I have a better idea, this will work for our barrier. While in place, I want to clean up the gross wall on the far side of the river, adding in more depth into the cliff faces so it doesn't look so bad. Before moving on to finish off the entire river, stretching all the way down to the lake, and adding in some custom rocks along the way. Do you ever get to that point in a Minecraft world where you're like, I'm sleeping every 30 seconds because the days are flying by? Because that is me right now. I am loving this build. It looks so dang good. We unfortunately did uh, lose our road over here. We're going to use these to build a nice little bridge across for the carts to get over just with some trap doors along the edge and done. We've now connected the lake all the way up to the top of the mountain with the river. Taking inspiration from the dwarves underground, we can utilize the technology we developed up there to show the two groups working together and build one of the large copper wheels for our water mill with a little bit more wood built in. Nice, I think that looks really good. Now on the inside, we don't have too much space to work with. So we can bring a beam in across here, chisel deep slate in the middle, and this is gonna be the saw. Don't touch, 
deadly. Now we're able to rotate it and support. From here, campfire's in the middle, and we now have a track for the logs to be pushed along with some sawdust on the ground. Functional standpoint is now in. We'll come back in and detail this out a little bit more in the future. Because the much bigger problem we have is, well, um, it's floating. The entire thing is floating. Currently, I do have loads of stone, so we're good there, but I'm out of dirt. All I got really is that. Wait, we have another box. Is there any in this mess? Oh, yes, there is. Finally, after gathering all these blocks, we can put them back down. I totally forgot about doing this, and I realized when I had small drip leaf in one of my sugar boxes, we got to decorate this little riverbed out. Few drip leaf and blades of grass later and some sugar cane and it's already looking so much better but with that it's finally time to get to work on this project i want to start by creating the pathway that our road is going to be following reaching to the starter house The route for the road is now in ready to go and i've installed a small retaining wall running into one small issue now as i only have 35 gravel to my name which doesn't make too much coarse dirt so in an effort to turn this entire roadway into coarse dirt time to grab an empty shulker box and the silk touch shovel we're off to find some gravel i ran back over to the guardian farm where i knew there's some gravel sitting on one of the beach cliff faces this should be plenty see we made a storage room it's perfectly functional from there i got to tearing up all of the dirt i just placed down to fill in the coarse dirt for the road time to break out the dirt and the stone one more time and connect us to the ground spending quite a few hours on this i got to thinking thinking about what i can use my second channel flip two for better moving forward so pulling back the curtain here what do you want to see on that channel there's going to be a world tour and a download available for all of the members for this hardcore world next week sometime but i'm thinking tutorials for small builds i do and behind the scenes content but let me know what you would like to be seeing as we're wrapping up this terraforming project this build is looking better than I could have imagined already. There's one more element to add in, a large windmill sticking right out of the roof. With our base support frame installed, we can start working our way up here and bringing it to a central point. Now with the stripped dark oak beam, we can start the transition, grabbing in some acacia trap doors and just adding a little bit of like a color highlight along here. There we have the base with a bunch of highlights here and the bright orange acacia trap doors. Now it's time to put on the blade. There she blows. Well, if Minecraft had wind, it would. But uh, there she sits. Next up, we need to move on to the interior of the windmill. First off, I'm going to get rid of the shulker box mess. To right outside. Now we need to finish off the sorter as it just kind of stops. Extending this wall out, we can fill in barrels all the way back here to connect some hoppers. From here, I'm going to manually sort everything into different barrels as we're going to have a ton of different types of items. I don't expect to have as much of each to fill an entire box, so we'll just put them together. With that connected, we can now move forward with decorating everything and surround the rest of this room with even more barrels. We can use a small dividing wall right over in here with an archway to help divide this off from the rest of the middle. Changing out the floor as well can help it feel a little different. And the first section is now done. Next, I wanna duck in behind the scaffolding and add in some gray and light gray stained glass. A similar idea on the second side, and now we're ready to tackle the middle. Picking up some extra hoppers over here. We can now hide a barrel so we can just drop items in directly instead of shulker boxes. But there we have it. The storage room is now fully completed, fully equipped with signs of every single type down here right now. And eventually, Mangrove's gonna go with those four barrels. The landscape is currently sticking out like a sore thumb. So before I can mark this project as complete, I need to add in some final touches. First, going over all of the dirt that we place and just adding in some grass and getting rid of the flowers. Here you can see the before and now after of how much of a difference this has made just by adding in a little bit of grass. From there, I thought it'd be cool to add in some tree stumps around here as if the lumberjacks from the mill are actually chopping things down. Promoting sustainability, I also want to plant a region of tree saplings. So naturally, as any other Minecraft player, we have to chop down a bunch of trees to get leaves to then be sustainable with our own custom trees. 
So now we pick up the spruce trees and we move them over here. One more little bit of detail we can add in here to our new trees is a bit of decoration to the ground. This can help to define it as being more of a man-made forest, and this adds the big time lore to the world. The tree lore, not that tree lore, little tree lore. And of course, some grass, but no flowers. Okay, maybe a few flowers along the way. They're so cute. And another dandelion patch over here because I can. We've built the most over the top possible storage room in here for all of our wood stuff moving forwards and have successfully cleared out one double chest that now has bricks in it and almost a barrel from the starter storage room. I think that's pretty good. I think that I think that's very good. One thing left to add in is I want to show movement between this area. So we need a wagon right along here. I am happy to say my first storage room of this hardcore world is now complete. After surviving 1,430 days in the same world, I've now completed one of the most basic things you can do in a Minecraft world in my style. This is how I want to play Minecraft creating over the top beautiful structures that still have a little bit of function to them. Or maybe they just look nice. But thank you for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed and be sure to subscribe as we're only just getting started in hardcore Minecraft.